Now we saw them on day two, out for one of our permitted walks. Three ships, liners, standing out in the water. Aye, conspicuous in their stillness as tankers slip between them on their way to Grangemouth. Couldn't figure out what they were doing. Hospital ships, she says. The government is commandeering liners for hospital ships. And the next day I went to check, but the harbour was in and all I could see was the rollers breaking out of the fret a few feet away. I stood staring into the fog until the chill got my bones. On the way back to the flat, I passed a seagull eating what had once been another seagull. He stops, stares at me, then laughs me out of his sight. I came away feeling worried. Through the rain, I see my neighbour, 90 years old, won't take a hand from anyone. Takes her 20 minutes to go up the close steps. Maggie was it, Martha. Get back, she shouts, and I'm holding the door. Go on up first, you'll not be waiting on me, coughing your feckin' germs at me, just on up you go. She smiles, so I know she's being wide. <laughs> we do this like mad bally in the stair, six feet apart in a passage three feet wide. Later, I'm thinking about Marjorie or Miriam, whatever, in her bed. All sheets and eyes are down, tucked right up to her chin, pure muttering what the world can do with its Covids and lockdowns and quarantines. Like a cough can kill with the Luftwaffe, couldn't it? Oh, blitz spirit, man. That's a brown-stained Macintosh of a phrase. Conjures up notions of sing-songs and tube stations. You know a happy, cheering underclass pure grateful for the opportunity to be bombed out of a slum. We have spontaneous sing-songs on balconies and wonder why the government scrabbles madly for war analogies. I am loving those live updates though. Seeing them public schoolboys truly out their depth, foreheads all creased, genuinely worrying for the first time ever. Now, they call it a war, but there was a war on yesterday and that wasn't an emergency. People dying under bombs or under bridges and none of that mattered. People starving in deserts, or just because the food bank's been robbed, and none of that mattered. Interesting what suddenly matters. These guys burn tenors in the faces of the hungry for a joke. Now they're talking about protecting the NHS. Giving doctors and nurses a nice cheap clap while they fall like flies. On day four, I'd done a load of research on the Blitz and poured the girl into a stushy. Told her the tragic truth, that for every washboard sing-song there was a rape, a theft and a murder. She's no having it. Gives me a telling off for making the crisis political and storms off to bed. I know, I shouldn't let facts spoil a good story. They're only facts. Facts that make me wonder what's happening behind the closed doors of the crisis. So, I light a fag and just watch the smoke spiral across the space between me and the unknowns in the flat above. Are they okay? Do they need help? Are they alone? Though there are worse things than being alone. How many people out there would leave tonight if they could? Because they promised themselves the next time would be the last time. Next time, they'd go. Now, this thinking makes me anxious, so I control my breathing and listen to the silent, drifting thoughts of my neighbours, the narratives they're creating for me. Somehow, I find sleep. But the smoke lies heavy in the air and the smell of burning infects my dreams. I dreamt I saw these three cargo ships sailing out of the fourth and the decks are piled high with bodies, all on each other, limbs entwined like something out of Belson. Hundreds of them, thousands, and, and, and among the dead, the living are walking in yellow plastic suits, spraying the corpses with fluid. They sail on, and just when they think they're out of sight, they light their cargo. A sheet of flame on the horizon, I'm far away, but somehow I can see hands. Burning hands, flesh turning to charcoal as the rain cools it. I wake with a tightness in my chest. Bathroom. I fumble at the tap. It get warm first and panic spit out. And then it's cold. And it's good. The breathing slows. Eases. They say tightness in the chest is a symptom of the virus. 
And I must have had it since I was 15. It took me so long to go outside, to trust outside. I had to be encouraged, threatened to go outside. And now that tightness in the chest from basic human interaction is coming from inaction, sliding back into old habits. Am I letting the side down? I see communities coming together, people reaching for closeness. Everyone is trying their best, I get it. Sharing advice and cooking tips and banal hopes for the world after the crisis. But there's a false jolly smile to all this. Making false promises for how good they'll be, how altruistic they'll be when... <laughs> when everything gets back to normal. <laughs> like normal was a fucking treat or something. They just can't wait to relight the blast furnace and shove the earth back in the hob. I can see them now, trooping right back to their old narrow cares. I can't believe this changes forever. Because I cared when they didn't. And it scares me that they can't wait to not care again. <laughs> On the fifth day, she said she wanted to go foraging. For Nels and Ground Elder and God knows what else. We had plenty of food, but I kind of sensed she'd been waiting on the day. She smiled at me, elbow deep in a stand of nettles, last of the winter sunshine on her lashes. And my heart melted a little, despite the meal to come. That night we had nettle soup, of course. Unsurprisingly, it tasted of dogweed. And once she'd gone to bed, I ordered a pizza. <laughs> Went down in the street and stood face to face with one of the foot soldiers of the crisis. Fucking surreal. I'm all like, cheers pal, but he just drops the box on the ground and takes these three big steps backwards and he's back in the car and off. And there's my altruism, fiver tip, probably infected, still sitting in my pocket where it remains. I was just about to head up and join the rest of the nation, smiling at danger or forgetting there was ever a crisis. I stopped dead. That's when I noticed three ships in the river. They were moving, coming into port. I couldn't stop myself. Wake up, darling, look, the ships. She says, what the fuck do you order a pizza for? 